I'm attempting the impossible here. Yesterday, we covered the top 10 most annoying moves in Tekken 8, and today, I'm going to be going over the top 10 best all-around moves in the entire game. Now, let's be honest. In a game like Tekken, it's pretty much impossible to get anyone to agree on anything. People will spend their time arguing over if Jin should be number 5 or number 6 on a tier list. So as you can probably imagine, in a game with thousands of moves, figuring out which ones are the very best is a major task that no one will ever agree on. So keep that in mind, this will naturally only be my opinion. Oh yeah, and by the way, I won't be including any heat smashers in this video. Otherwise, pretty much every move would just be a heat smash. Besides that, every other move is on the table. Make sure to let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree with my picks, and what your picks would be for the best moves in the game. Alright, that's enough talking. Let's get into the list, starting with number 10. Our first move is not the Mishima move you expect. That one will be coming later. This move is the renowned Demon Paw. More specifically, Kazuya's version of the attack. Demon Paws have always been strong in Tekken, but Tekken 8 brought them to a ridiculous level. It gave them all ridiculous range, knockback on block, more tracking than ever before, and of course made them a heat engager and a launcher if used out of a heat dash. These moves control the neutral. They come out quick and hit very hard. All of the Demon Paws are strong, especially Jin's, but Kazuya's is on the next level for a couple reasons. It has more tracking, especially in Heat, where it almost becomes impossible to consistently sidestep. The damage of the move also doubles while in Heat due to the natural laser extension, and it has the most pushback compared to the others. It works so well to give Kazuya the neutral option he's been needing for decades. Jin's Demon Paw is not far behind. They're both pretty much the same, I just think Kazuya's gets an edge because of how good it is during Heat, and that's why it's number 10. I'm sure you've heard this one a lot, so let's get it out of the way quickly. Dragonov Sneak 4 is dumb, and needs to be seriously toned down. No move should do as much as this move. Plus 7 on block, some of the best range out of any move in the game. Seriously, this thing will hit you from another continent. It's a heat engager, it hits grounded, it just does everything. Oh yeah, and you can heat dash out of it for a full Dragonov damage combo. It also comes out way faster than any move like this should. Basically, Sneak 4 is a perfect move. It has no real weakness, and if you gave it to pretty much any character in the game, they would rise a lot on the tier list. You already know this, this move is incredible, and that's why it's number 9. I love King, but I think we can all agree that King is a uniquely frustrating character to fight in this game. They nerfed the tracking on his throws, which was nice, but they also buffed him twice. The first one allowing him to cancel his run stance, and the second one giving him a Mishima wave dash. It's been pretty crazy, but if you ask me, there's one move that they've been forgetting to nerf each patch, and that's his forward forward neutral 2. This is arguably the best low poke in the game. It comes out insanely fast, deals very good damage, has very good range, and evades all high attacks. Oh yeah, it's also only minus 13 on block and does 50 damage on counter hit. 50, you heard me right, for a minus 13 low. Other moves that are this fast with similar properties like Fangwei's down back 3 are launch punishable, but not this one. King should be spamming this move, it's so strong. Huge honorable mention to his down forward 2-1 counter hit string. That's also a ridiculously overpowered move, and I considered putting it here. You could definitely make the argument it's better. I just think the low is way too overtuned right now to not be mentioned, and that's why it's number 8. June's forward 2 is the best whiff punishing tool in the game. Nothing even comes close. The range of this move is absurd, and it works incredibly well combined with her strong movement. This move is a follow-up with even more range that is for some reason safe on block. In fact, you can do both of these hits on your opponent's block and there's nothing they can do. They can't duck the second hit, they can't sidestep it, they just have to sit there and watch while taking chip damage. Now in exchange for how safe this move is, June does take some damage, and thank god she does, but this really doesn't change too much. Especially because of how much she heals all the time. Just an overall ridiculous move to have in your toolkit, and thank god no top tiers have this move, or this game would be a lot less fun. I couldn't not give the strongest whiff punisher in the game a spot on this list. That's why it's number 7. Jin has a lot of stupid stuff in this game. I love him for it, and that's why I main him, but I think he has one move that stands above pretty much all the others. The same as in Tekken 7, I think his forward 4 is not only his best move, but one of the best moves in the entire game. This move has infinite range and works incredibly well for keepouts, but its biggest strengths are in its safety and counter hit properties. This move is a full counter hit launcher, which leads to some of Jin's highest damaging combos. In Tekken 7, doing the safe combo from his counter hit forward 4 was actually one of the most difficult staples in the entire game. 
and they've just completely gotten rid of that. Now you just run up and easily pick them up for a combo. This move has incredible range, so your opponents are always going to be respecting it, and that's when his stance comes in. If he hits this move normally with no counter hit, he can hold forward for a ridiculous plus 11 and either get a free Zen mix up or cancel into wave dash. This is broken, and if you block the forward 4, he can also go into stance, making the move only minus 1. Basically neutral, except Jin's now in your face with a stance. This means he can immediately power crush to beat certain options, go for his very evasive Samsara, go for a high crushing low, or cancel into his wave dash for more mix ups. This move just does everything and is at the backbone of what makes Jin Jin, and that's why it's number 6. Sorry to quickly interrupt this video, but if you guys are enjoying this and want to see more scripted Tekken 8 content like this, please consider pressing that subscribe button. It's free to do and it only takes a couple seconds of your time. I really hate doing these plugs, but it goes such a long way in helping me fight the YouTube algorithm and work towards my dreams of hopefully one day doing this as a full-time job. So I would really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much and let's get back to the video. Claudio has some insane moves, and I almost went with his back one for this list. It's probably the best homing move in the game. It's ridiculously safe on block due to the way he steps back after landing it. It does chunky damage, has a long range wall splat for big damage, and it launches airborne opponents. It's a ridiculous move for sure. But I think he has a move that serves a similar purpose, but it's during heat, and that move is his down back 1 plus 2. This move is incredibly fast, and is only minus 2 on block, while also leaving him a great distance away. And it's also a very fast full launcher for Claudio's incredibly high damage. It fully tracks to the left, his weak side, and even clips people stepping right sometimes, which is how you're supposed to beat this move. He can get 3 of these off consistently in heat, and it's just so hard to deal with. It's very, very close between that or his back one. Both of these moves just serve to do everything. It's like a win button, but I think this move slightly outdoes it. And that's why it's number five. Law has a lot of broken stuff in this game, but I think one move that is genuinely a contender for the best in the game is surprisingly his jab combo. You've probably heard about it by now, but Law is the only character in the game who can Twitch confirm his 1-1-1 string during heat and heat dash out of it for a full launch. This basically makes this a 10 frame counter hit launcher during heat. 10 frames. He'll do his safe 1-1 one, one, and then if he sees you presses into it or hears the counter hit sound, he simply presses the other one and uses his heat dash. And you just die. No other character in the game has anything like this. Every other jab string that's a heat engager only gives a basic grounded follow up after a heat dash. But Law gets a full launch for some reason. This move alone instantly makes Law's heat broken. And that's why I think it's number 4. Okay, we're here in the top 3 now, and I want to clarify that pretty much all of these 3 next moves are interchangeable. I don't think any of them are much better than the others, so any of them could technically be the best. So, let's talk about Tekken's most iconic move, the Electric Wind God Fist. More specifically, Kazuya and Reina's Electric Wind God Fist. As they're able to come out a frame faster than the other two Mishimas, at frame 13 if done perfectly. This in theory gives them a 13 frame launcher that on average will lead to about 100 damage with walls for both these characters. 13 frames. They can punish a hop kick with this. Now, this move is balanced around being incredibly difficult to use quickly, but the fact that it's even possible is ridiculous. You know what else is ridiculous? A fast, normal hit launcher being plus 5 on block. No other character has anything like the electric, and thank god for that. It's just an incredible move with almost no weakness. Sure, it's a high, but ducking an electric is a bad idea. This is because of the insanely strong mids Kazuya and Reina has, and more importantly because it doesn't work half the time. The move comes out so incredibly fast, and the recovery time on it is basically non-existent. This move just serves to control the neutral, and is the best keep out tool in the game if you ask me. It's amazing for pressure and setups because of the plus frames and knockback, and again, if you get hit by one, you die. That's why it's number 3. Brian's taunt is stupid. It's almost designed to be stupid. It's an unblockable mid move that if cancelled perfectly gives him plus 16 frames while you can't block. This is one of the best Oki options in the game as well, as the hitbox works perfectly for when your opponent is getting up right in front of you. You've probably heard of the iconic taunt jet upper. If the Brian player has perfect, and I mean perfect timing, you can use your jet upper launcher after the taunt, which after the recent buffs, now do unscaled damage. Basically, a quick unblockable move into one of the most damaging combos in the entire game. 
Now, it's important to mention that using Taunt is very difficult. Taunt at Upper is one of the hardest moves to ever use in Tekken, and even doing a more basic thing with a Taunt, like Taunt Back 4 for his broken wall pressure, will take a long time to do consistently. Despite that, if we're talking about the potential of moves, Taunt is absolutely one of the best moves in the game. And that's why it's number two. Wow, who could have seen this coming? The move I put in the most annoying is also number one in my best moves video. Crazy. I think Yoshimitsu's Flash is ridiculous. It's a move that basically functions as a counter hit launcher, and it comes out at six frames. This is not even remotely fair. The Yoshi player can use it for almost everything. They can beat strings they normally wouldn't be able to. They can beat pressure situations where you're super plus on block and you're sure they can't do anything. Oh, the flash comes out and you just took 100 damage. At the very least, the flash will always give a heat engager, but in a lot of cases, they'll get a full launch and you'll just explode. Anyone will tell you that Yoshimitsu breaks the rules of Tekken, and this is one of the main ways he does it, along with his 20 unblockable launchers, which we'll talk about in the Yoshi video coming soon. I just think on a basic level, this move is so incredibly strong. It wasn't as strong in previous games because Yoshi's damage was nothing crazy, but here in Tekken 8, he has some of the highest damage in the entire game. The flash alone, just having the flash, gives a constant mental stack on your opponent. You're always thinking, oh, when's he gonna use flash? When's he gonna mess up my combo? When's he gonna mess up my block string? Like, you never know when it's gonna come out, and that just makes this move so incredibly strong. So here we are at the end of the list. Make sure to let me know in the comments what you think about my list, if you agree or disagree, and again, give me your own top moves in the game. I'll be down there chatting with you guys as always. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe, and join my new Discord server if you want to chat with a growing Tekken community and myself. As always, I want to give a big shout out to my YouTube members and Patreon patrons. Thank you guys so much. I could not do this without you. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you later. Take it easy.